So we've talked about functions and we've talked about variables. Now we're going to talk about for loops. A for loop is a helpful little tool that allows us to repeat a step or a series of steps a specific number of times. And we're also going to talk about the concept of white space. White space is very, very important in Python. So first of all, we're going to look at the syntax for a for loop. So it starts with the word for and then the letter i in range and then we'll give it a parenthesis and we'll start our count at 0 and we will end our count at 10 and then we have a colon so that's the the first part of a for loop and what this says is uh, for the number of times it takes for, to get from 0 to 10 going up each time that's the number of times that we're going to do whatever we put inside the for loop so in this case I'm just going to write print i so i is basically our little number holder for whatever, wherever we happen to be in our, our little loop here. So if I run this, I'm going to get a little print. So the first time we run through, i is equal to 0. The second time we, we run through, it's 1, 2, all the way up to 9. Now the reason we don't see 10 is because this, when, it, when i equals 10, the for loop is done. So the concept of white space is how we know that th the stuff that's indented one, one tab over is what we're going to do inside the for loop. So if I come over here and I, I do a shift tab and I say print foo, what we're going to see is it will print all of these things and then it'll print foo one time because foo is is outside of the range of the for loop. So let's just do that. So here you can see we've got our, our numbers and that's what i is equal to as we run through the for loop and then we get one foo. Now if I tab this over, this is what we get because now foo lives inside the for loop. And this little, this line space here doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the indent. So Periodically, you'll see something like, uh, if I just hit the space bar here, I'm going to basically move this one space in, and the error that we get is unindent does not match any outer indentation level. So if you see an error that talks about indent level, that's just basically Python telling you that it identifies that there's something going on with your white space, because basically you can only deal with tab and shift tab as the amount of space. Now, this is going to be one, two, three, four, f I guess four spaces over, and that will work as well. So there it goes and it's happy. But it's much easier to just use the tab key and shift tab going backwards. So another vari variation here on the, f on the f uh, for loop is we don't actually need to specify the starting condition. We can just say 10 and it will start counting probably at zero. Let's give it a shot. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that foo. So yeah, it starts counting at zero and stops at nine. So that is the very, very basic layout of a for loop. Now I'm going to show you something here. I'll show you what a, what a for, for loop looks like in Mel. We'll, we'll do this exact same thing. So the syntax is for, and then we do a parenthesis, open parentheses dollar sign i equals zero that's our starting condition semicolon dollar sign i is less than 10 that's our while this evaluates as true keep going and then dollar sign i plus plus and we close the parentheses and then we do an open and close bracket and you can see if i add one and hit enter it'll automatically add the other one and here i can just say print dollar i semicolon and let's see what we get yeah so in this case it doesn't put the uh, the the space or the you know the indent new line kind of thing but we get the exact same result so this thing right here is a little bit more ungainly obviously than our elegant little python line here but this is an important concept as we're learning python and you know maybe just seeing some of this mel if you Google for loop uh, and let's just pick JavaScript and we'll go to the first thing that pops up. Here we can see, well, it's a little bit more complicated. 
here we go. So four i equals one semicolon i is less than five or yeah less than five semicolon i plus plus and then open close bracket. So the mel for loop is identical to the JavaScript for loop. So that is a very important thing and should be uh, a little bit if you if you're if you're stressing about this maybe lessen the the discomfort because when you learn one scripting language you're really sort of learning all of them I mean there's going to be definitely some significant differences from one language to another and one of them is going to be better at some things and others and honestly the ones that I know are Python, Mel, and a little bit of C Sharp so I can't really speak to the other languages and what they're good for but I do know they pretty much all have variables and they all have for loops and they all have arrays or lists depending on you know how they're they're you know set up so as you're learning they all have functions and whatever like all the kind of stuff that we're going to look at you learn it once it's hard the first time but then somebody asks you to 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 uh, write some script in some other language it's only really an issue of figuring out the syntax because you you already have your head around the moving parts so uh now let's do something with this for loop how about rather than printing i let's make a sphere so because this is in Python now, I've got to put MC in front of it, right, sphere, and then we'll just use the default settings. So if I do this, what I'm going to get, if I kind of scoot this over a little bit, are a bunch of spheres all stacked up. I should have 10 spheres, and if I go to my outliner by going window outliner, NURB sphere through uh, NURB sphere one through NURB sphere ten because when you create an object you're never gonna have a NURB sphere zero unless you specifically name it that um, so in this case it starts at one and it goes to ten uh, and here is our range so if I wanted to make more I could just delete these and come over and make this twenty run it again so now I've got a whole bunch more spheres here but they're all stacked up on each other and it doesn't really look that cool so what I'm going to do is space them out evenly and the way I do that is I'm just going to come down I'll grab one of these z-spheres, or uh, one of these regular spheres, I've been playing with ZBrush all day, sorry about that uh, and I'm just going to scoot it and we'll look at the code, so here is the code so now I can come down here and I will go ahead and comment out the actual mel script so I can use it as a reference so we've got move, we know that needs to be mc.move and we can go ahead and put all this stuff minus the semicolon into the uh, uh, parentheses and I'm going to go ahead and move the relative flag, in fact I'm actually just going to get rid of it and we'll just space these out with little commas so now if I do this and I run the tool or my little code here they're all still stacked up on each other and the reason is they've all been moved over this random number here so I'm actually just going to make this a whole number so it's a little bit cleaner so they're all now sitting at 2 what I need is for the first one to be at 0 the second one to be at 2 the third one to be at 4, 6, 8 and so on so what I have access to and this is very very important is here in the for loop while I live inside the for loop I have access to i and i is my counter so what that means, I'm going to go ahead and drop this back down to 10 so we don't have so many, is I can actually use i here in my code. So I'm going to say 2 asterisk i. And uh, it should work, but I'm just going to go ahead and put this in a parentheses so that it uh, evaluates before it gets used. So what this is going to do is it's going to take 2 and it's going to multiply it times whatever i happens to be for each loop through, or each trip through the for loop. So now if I run this, what I get are a bunch of spaced out spheres. So hopefully that's not too confusing. And the punchline again one more time is that we get access to i so long as we are inside our for loop which is indicated by the white space. So now if I tab this over one more time I'm going to get another error because it doesn't really understand why this is indented. So you've got to make sure that you've, you you maintain your indents appropriately. Again, that's tab and shift tab. And while you're working through your for loop here, you have access to the variable i, which is going to hold your count. So that is a very brief introduction to uh, for loops. And in the next lesson, I'll show you a, a little bit more of an interesting example. So stay tuned.